Alleluia. Oh, sometimes I don't want to sing. Uh, I don't want to preach. I want to continue singing. Oh, do you mind if we sing one more song? Just very small. Let's sing it a cappella. Give him glory. Give him honor. He is the King of kings. Lift your voices loud in praises to Jesus the Son of God. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor this morning, Lord. We give you glory and honor this morning, Lord. There was a sermon I preached quite a long time ago, but I do remember its name. A little act of kindness goes a long, long way. And we're going to see a story today that I hope will inspire us all to continue in well-doing. We're going to speak about the Apostle Paul this morning. If you remember, Paul was an enemy of Jesus, persecuted the Christians to such an extent that uh, people were thrown into prison and killed. And then Jesus met him. There was an encounter that changed his life. And he became the great missionary Paul. And from persecuting the church, God used him to build the church. And the religious, uh, the Sadducees and the uh, Pharisees were very upset because this was their best man, as it were. <laughs> their champion had changed sides and they went out to kill him. And at one point in time, Paul came back to Jerusalem and in doing so, he was apprehended and they were about to kill him when the Romans intervened and caught him. There was a toing and a froing and debates, and at the end of the day, Paul very wisely made it a contention between the Sadducees and the Pharisees when he said, I am charged uh, with uh, 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 about the cause of the resurrection of the dead. And I don't know if you know, there's a big difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Sadducees don't believe in a life after death. And, um, and, uh, and from that, uh, there was another great council, and Paul basically said, I appeal to Caesar. And in appealing to Caesar, he had to go to Rome. Going to Rome was not taking EasyJet in those days. Uh, it was a long trip, first to the port and then from the port, from port to port. And the first port of calling, they came to Crete. And in their boat, there was 276 of them. There was one centurion, I don't know how many uh, soldiers, and then the rest were prisoners. But 276 men on board, and Paul was one of them. And Paul, being in the spirit, 
um, when the centurion, who was basically the captain of the ship, said, right, we're, we will now take uh, leave of Crete and go on in our journey, Paul said, don't. It's danger. But the centurion saw a soft breeze going in the right direction. And as is many times the case in life, he believed in what he saw rather than believing in what the word of God was saying. We must have a prayer life to hear God's voice. Be very, very cautious if you are not praying as you should and you think you hear the voice of God. Be very cautious if you're not prayerful because what you see may not be what you think. The centurion did not listen to Paul. He saw the breeze and off they went and ended up a few days later in the biggest storm of their life. How many of us could see a parallel in our own lives when we thought there was a soft, gentle breeze going in the right direction, only to end up in the biggest of storms? Paul began to fast and to pray. When we are in a storm, let me encourage you, exhort you, no, even command you. When you are in a great storm in your life, then it's time to fast as well as to pray. Fasting is not popular you do not see many big preachers talking about fasting. But Jesus said, if you fast, or did he? No. He said, when you fast. And he said it just after he said, when you pray. I have neglected fasting in my life and have found it again. But it is extremely important. The more you want from God, the more you hope, uh, the more you believe, you will see that fasting is an integral part of the Christian walk. And so Paul began to fast and pray in the storm. Though they were in the Mediterranean, this was not club med weather, if you get my meaning. It was cold. It was windy. There was rain. And the waves were enormous. And this little boat was just like a leaf blown in a hurricane whirlwind. And a few days into his fast, we are told that an angel of the Lord came to him and said those familiar words that God often speaks to us. He said, fear not, fear not. And Paul was promised safe passage to Rome and also promised that every soul on that ship would live. The next morning, as the wave still cascaded over that ship, Paul came to give them the good news. <laughs> I don't know that they uh, uh, were listening to him very much, but I do believe there was one man listening. And it was the centurion that didn't listen to him in the beginning of their journey. And he said, all the 276 
souls would be saved. And funnily enough, we are then told that everyone on that ship began to fast. <laughs> this was a storm. And they fasted 14 days. You imagine being in a storm in a little wooden ship for 14 days, day and night, holding on. I don't know if any of you have ever been in a very small aeroplane that's very old and you're in the middle of a storm. I, I lived that in Nigeria once. It's amazing how many people start to pray. And this is where we take up the story. Because the ship, after 14 days, they saw an island. They'd already thrown off everything in the ship that they could to make it lighter. And they ran aground. It was a near-death experience. Paul had saved the day, as it were. He was, in fact, the leader in the men's hearts. And here they are. Acts 28 and verse 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. The rain and the cold continued. They were out of the storm at sea, but the storm continued to ravage. my experience, brothers and sisters, that many times the storm lasts longer than we would like. And it's beautiful to see how these Maltese people received them and made a big fire. And I can see them all huddled around. taking in the heat. They had gone through that storm. Everyone was alive. The soldiers were thinking how they had lost the ship, the cargo. And here they were on an island. And they didn't want to think about tomorrow. All they knew is that they would no longer drown, and they were in front of a fire, and it was nice and warm, and they didn't want to leave that place of comfort. The prisoners were also there. Their thoughts were a little different. They were sorrowful. They had landed on an island because they knew there was no escape. <laughs> had they landed on a continent, they could have run. But here was an island, and so they were stuck. They were still prisoners. 
And there was Paul. As I said, the leader in the hearts of those men. And he was probably thinking, why did they not listen? All of this could have been avoided. And I think he was hoping he deserved it, surely. A bit of peace and quiet. Some some warmth and some rest. He had been fasting more than them all. And so he was about to fall asleep when he heard a voice. Paul, go and get some wood. He shrugged off the voice. No, surely that can't be you, Lord. Paul, go and get some wood for the fire. And as you do sometimes when you feel that uh, you deserve a rest and a pat on the back, he thought to himself, there are all these prisoners, these young men here. Lord, Paul, go and get some wood. And I am persuaded that it took a lot for Paul to get up and walk away from that very comforting fire. But he went back into the cold, back into the rain. And his obedience only brought him to be cold again, wet again, and to cap it all, when he had done what God had asked, a viper had bitten him on the hand. And it hurt. It's not always easy to obey God when he asks us to do things. And I believe in these troubled times that we are in, we sometimes allow ourselves to believe that we deserve to be left in peace, to have some quiet time by our fire, whatever your fire is, whatever brings you comfort and rest and peace. Maybe it's a quilt, maybe it's your favorite sofa, maybe it's your favorite TV program, maybe it's your favorite food, maybe it's talking with this one or that one. Whatever it is where you feel warm and comfortable. But you know, God calls us to obey his voice even when we think it's our time to stay by the fire. And you may have experienced this in your own life. You obey God's voice and it doesn't seem to be a good outcome at all. And I can just see Paul coming back to the fire with a sore hand. <sighs> I, don't know, I don't know that he was having a big, a big holy smile on his face. And he probably didn't say it, but he sort of thought it really quickly. Lord, I did what you asked. Leave me alone. I just want to be warm. Okay. 
Let's carry on the story, though. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, <laughs> whom though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. Let me tell you something else, that when we sometimes obey the Lord, people around us will not discern what you've done and will be criticized for it, accused, treated badly, thought of badly. But he shook off the beast into the fire, we're told. Howbeit they looked. You can just see them. They were watching him carefully. They wanted to see how he would die, <laughs> how his hand would swell. And Paul, maybe, was very still. Again, he's by the fire, trying to get warm. And they looked. And they looked. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. <laughs> but after that they had looked a great while, I can just see them saying, It was a viper. We know it was a viper. We know this is a, this snake. We know it's poisonous. But after that they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> Look at that. In the space of a few minutes, a person can accuse you for being a murderer, and then you're a god. That's just like the world. Don't listen too much to criticism or applause. It can be very fickle. Remember what Jesus said when they wanted to make him king? He did not commit himself unto men, for he knew all men and he knew what was in man. These very people that were shouting and praising that he should be king would be the same people who would then say, crucify him. So take criticism and applause the same way. There's one honor that we seek, is there, is there not? It's the honor that comes from God alone. Paul had obeyed, but Paul did not know what God would do with a little, a little act of obedience. They were watching, and now all of a sudden, this man who they thought was a murderer had become a divine. And they spoke amongst themselves, and everybody knew this was a special man. The centurion knew. The crew of the boat knew. And now the inhabitants of the island knew. Verse 7. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us, and lodged us three days courteously. No doubt, Publius heard of Paul. 
He was the talk of the town, as it were. And he came to Paul, and they started to talk. There was a divine meeting, an encounter between Publius and Paul. And as they spoke, Publius told Paul, verse 8, and it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of fever and of a bloody flux. He was to die. There was no remedy. And he shared with Paul. And Paul said, I'll pray for him. And we are told in verse 8, Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Verse 9, So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Hundreds of people healed, probably more received the gospel. There was revival. All because one man who was cold in front of his fire heard God's voice and went to collect some wood for the fire. My brothers, my sisters, we never know what the smallest act of obedience might bring. And I wonder sometimes how many small acts of obedience that we did not do kept people and kept God from doing what he wanted to do. And this is why we have communion today. Many times we take communion for the sins we've committed, for the wrong that we've done. But there's also a, pr a place of God's forgiveness for not doing the good that we ought to have done. And I think we're far more guilty, most of us, of those sins than of the sins of disobedience. A bundle of sticks changed the life of hundreds, maybe thousands. I want us, I want myself to hear more clearly his voice and obey when I hear it. I will admit to you, I have many times heard God's voice, I believe, in my life and I have not obeyed to do what he asked me to do. I was too busy, or it wasn't the right moment, or this, or that, or the, da, 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 da. But if we would apprehend how obedience brings the blessing and the glory of God, And we think of, of course, this Christmas where the obedience of Jesus Christ who came into the world saved our souls. His obedience was for 33 and a bit years, every single day, refusing sin and embracing righteousness, always doing the things that his father asked him, never once disobeyed, never once accepted temptation. And he did that for me, for you, for us. And his obedience was such that it offers the salvation to hundreds of millions of people through the ages. 
people today. We underestimate the obedience and what it can bring. Paul could have just stayed by the fire, not done a thing. And who knows what might not have happened. Let's continue doing good and reaching out. I believe in this time that we are living, we sort of allow ourselves to say, Lord, these are difficult times. And so I'm just going to be comfortable. This, this world is discomforting enough. So I'm just going to stay by my fire. Stay warm. Weather the storm. When in fact there's things to do, Bella. Things to do, Claire. Things to do. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says this and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not Now's not the time to faint. Now this is n now is not the time to give up. Now is the time, if any, to embrace the essentials of the Christian life. Now is the time to pray more than ever. Now is the time to search the scriptures more than ever. Now is the time for us to assemble more than ever. Now is the time for us to reach out, to serve and to shine more than ever. Yes, I know, we will leave the comfort of the fire and the warmth. But there is a, a reward to sacrifice. And if there's something that God honors and God moves upon, it is sacrifice. It's time to pray, to be an intercessor. We pray far too much for our own lives and not enough for others. God has your life in control. But what about those? It's hard enough. These days are hard enough. But we have Jesus with us. We have hope. We're passing through. We know it. There's, a, there's something awaiting us that's eternal and wonderful and beautiful. And we're passing through. And yet sometimes we live as though this is the only life we're ever going to have. And so that fire becomes so important to us. No. There's a place that we're going to. But on our journey, Jesus says, pick up your cross. What does that mean? Literally a cross on my shoulder? Of course not. It's do what I ask you, even if it costs you. If in, even if you... Do, when I woke up this morning... Very early. Do you think I wanted to get out of bed and pray? Do you think my flesh was saying, oh, you be David. It's time to rise and, and to go and pray. Oh, I'm so looking for... No. I don't think there's ever been a time in my... No, there's been a few. But very, very rarely have I woken up in the morning and said... Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm going to get out of this nice warm bed and I'm going to go to pray. And all the times I've said, I'll pray in bed, I didn't. I fell back to sleep. 
There's a price to pay. It's a price to pay, but God shows up when we pay it. Hallelujah. A bundle of sticks. A bundle of sticks, that's all it was. And God changed the nation. Malta remains a Christian country today. A great history of Christianity. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them that are our colleagues at work. especially to them who are of the household of faith. In March of 2020, God gave me a prophecy for our assembly and made it very clear that the enemy's agenda was to disintegrate the churches, to get people leaving, isolated, in their corners, by their fires. And all over the world, it is what has happened too often. It's a great, great shame and heartbreaking when God speaks and we don't discern and we don't see what he's trying to say. You know, there is a place in life to make a decision on the greater good. Do you know what that means, a gr the greater good? It means you make your decision on something in respect to what the greater good is. Not The greater good in your life and mine is to obey the scriptures irrespective of how you're feeling. So when the scriptures say, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, especially as you see the day of the Lord approaching, that scripture, if there's any, been any time in the history of man, it is to be applied today. And if you have to do something you don't feel like doing to be able to assemble, then think, think of the greater good. Now, everybody's free to do what they want. Do you know why? Because that's the God-given freedom. But the scriptures are clear. I will do what I need to to be able to assemble together because that's the greater good, to be together. Because God dwells in the praises of his people. Because God wants his people to come together, to worship him, to hear his word, to have communion. May we hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, but especially unto them that are of the household of faith. This is the time where we should be looking out for one another. Meeting, being together, inviting people to our homes, encouraging one another, praying for one another, laying whole hands on each other. It's the time. Let God be true and every man a liar. And so I'd like us to take communion this morning. You have a little communion.
communion. And I want us to especially have a communion. We remember the Lord. Yes, we do. Um, Look at this, 1 Corinthians 11. This is the, 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 the chapter that we often read as we take communion. But look what it says. When you come together, therefore, into one place. <laughs> Couldn't be clearer, could it? To have communion, you come together in one place. Verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The body broken does not just speak of the stripes that our Lord Jesus took before he went onto the cross. It speaks of the broken life. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. His was a life of total obedience. And we are told he was made perfect through the things which he suffered. And he suffered what he suffered that he might be the perfect lamb of sacrifice and the perfect high priest. All of that, not for himself, but for you and for me. How wonderful. How wonderful. He did that all for you and me. He didn't just come away from that fire once from time to time. It was a daily chore for him, hour by hour, obeying his Father. For I do always those things which please him. How wonderful is our Lord. And his obedience meant that he deserved the greatest reward ever. And he received it. And what did he do when he received it? He shares it with us. He did it for us, gained the prize, and then shared the prize. <laughs> Wonderful. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread and let us eat. And after the same manner also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The life is in the blood. When the blood was shed, his love and his life was poured out onto the dust of the earth, which is what you and I are. And he redeemed the dust of the earth and made us sons of God. It's his blood that cleanses me. It's his blood that gives me life. It's his blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. 
he poured out his blood until his heart gave up. He gave it all, everything, held nothing back. He who is immortal became mortal. He who was life became death. He who was holy became a curse and sin, all for us. Lord, we remember the blood that you shed that brings forgiveness of sin to us. Let's drink. Let's take a few moments. And I'd like us to especially think of this, please. Let us think of the sins of omission. Those things which we did not do that we should have. All the times we said no to prayer in the morning. All the times we put down the Bible without reading it. The times we neglected coming to the assembly of the saints. Times we neglected to serve and to share. Let's bring these things before God now. I don't know if we can play a little bit of music whilst we just reflect. And if not, let's just be quiet before God and let him speak to us. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning and we ask for your forgiveness. Where have we have neglected to do the things you asked us to? Where we have let things slip and slide? Maybe a bit less loud. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord, forgive us for those things that we have neglected, those things we have let slip in our lives, our times of prayer. Rushing to work, Lord, without praying, making decisions without your word. At times, Lord, you put it on our hearts to call someone, pray for someone. We didn't do it. For the times, Lord, we were too lazy to come into your house, times we just strolled in late. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us and help us as we sit by our fires to hear your voice 
and to obey your voice, to do the things that you command us to do, that we might see also your glory and your power demonstrated in our lives. Jesus, help us to say yes when you speak. Help us not to refuse your call. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We'll finish with this reading from Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has e highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. He humbled himself and became obedient. He denied himself. Let us do the same, brothers and sisters. Let us, when God calls, and I believe he's going to, because I, I know that God has something in this store for this world. This world has not gone through what it's gone through without God doing something. And that's something he wants to do through us. So let us be prepared to hear, to get up, to go and to do what the Lord asks us. Let me get my bundle of sticks. Let me go and get the wood for the fire, the fire of revival. Let's be ready. It's you. Jesus needs. It's me. It's every one of us. Father, thank you for what we have heard today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoken. We have heard. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, in these times, help us to discern, to obey, to serve, to shine, to be servants unto God. Don't let us sit by the fire when you would us have us go and do something for you. We thank you for our brother Paul. Thank you, Lord. Though he was wet, cold, and tired, he went to get his bundle of sticks and changed a nation. Thank you. Let us have the same faith, Lord, that you can do the same. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people said, Amen and Amen. God bless us all richly. And uh, if we don't see each other um, because you have family, uh, Christmas, 
Uh, I just pray, may God keep us close to him during this season, and we'll see each other soon, I hope. God bless you. Take care.